Hi, I'm Anupa Veliswami. Uh, we are based in Koyamato. Uh, we are processing wet waste with the help of a biological media that is a black soldier fly larvae, where the larvae uh, stage is used for processing wet waste. Uh, we can process tons and tons of wet waste uh, with this larvae very efficiently. It's like not a not days of uh, processing, just overnight processing. We can clear wet waste. So that is the efficiency of this larvae. So this is the hatched uh, BSFL larvae. They are this small. Uh, when they are ready to start the processing uh, waste. Till this stage, uh, we uh, pamper them like a child with a <laughs> very protective feed. Uh, after this, they have to do their work of processing uh, with waste of any scale. Uh, and they are they are very versatile in handling. It can be vegetable waste or food waste or meat waste. They are ready to handle. So uh, the first stage uh, we call it as growth stage. And uh, first, the small larvae uh, is deployed to process the waste. Waste in the sense any waste, any waste can be processed with uh, BSFL. <coughs> so uh, these are the size small larvae. So within within 15 days, uh, even this is like a fourth day larvae, but just 15 days they have the time to uh, eat or process all the wet waste and grow as quickly as possible to reach their next uh, stage. Okay. Okay. So these are the larvae. This is mature larvae. They had enough of waste, they processed enough of waste for the past 15 days. And now they are ready to go into as a feed for uh, poultry, aqua, pets, pets like dogs, cats, for everything, for ev uh, every one of them. It's a very, very good protein source. <clears throat> it has good fat also. So very, very nutritious uh, protein source. We call it as insect protein, which is hypoallergenic for uh, many of the, mainly for dogs. So, and this is one, uh, one efficient way and very quick way to process with waste. Uh, we are doing that for since 2018 and uh, it's like a proven technology as of now for us where we have the post harvest processing also done and the pre-processing with waste also we handle every day in tons. Uh, so the nothing is goes out of, goes out of uh, BSFL unit as a waste. We don't have any leachates out of the waste that we process in whatever volume we do. Uh, out of the biomass that we take out of as a larvae, uh, we have the compost also, the excreta of the larvae, which we call it as frass, which is coming out of insect basically. So it is called as frass. It acts as a very good uh, biofertilizer for um, agricultural purpose. Uh, it has an inert uh, capacity to repel insects because it itself uh, comes out of insect and. Uh, BSFL has an effect of rippling other insects when it is existing in a particular substrate. So some enzymatic uh, uh, extrusion that extractions that is happening in, in this larvae that is rippling the insects also. So uh, if you see it's like a 360 degree uh, processing of waste without, uh, without any uh, byproducts or nuisance that is happening to the environment totally processing the waste and converting upscaling that to either a protein source or a very very good biofertilizer uh, so that is a, a very important thing which uh, more, very very less uh, technology can handle especially for wet waste uh, at the current scenario so <clears throat> these are the dried larvae uh, slow dried larvae it uh, gains some dark pigments because of the slow drying or else it's the larvae stage uh, that we take it out after 15 days so this directly get uh, acts as a feed for uh, country chickens right now we are giving them uh, directly we also give them in a broken form into small small pieces so that even the small chicks like one or two day chicks can also take it there is no digestion issues and all uh, they can very well take uh, and we break them into small pieces and we call it as crumbled uh, feed. Uh, but uh, it looks like pellet, right? Natural mm. pellet. So we don't have to process. There is no need of another processing happening. And nutrition also, it is balanced. 
good enough for the chicks, uh, chickens or uh, fish to take. So uh, I don't see like uh, it's, it, energy wise the entire uh, system is like very energy efficient. Uh, we don't have to process too much or either to process the waste or for the end product. It can be consumed and uh, the waste is consumed directly though we do some pre-processing that is of a very minimal energy uh, requirement and also the post harvest processing. Uh, but we also extract uh, oil out of it because of its usage and uh, the end product has a protein percentage of 58 to 60 percent mm -hmm. because we re remove the oil it becomes defatted uh, meal with the increased uh, protein percentage which has certain uh, intense applications where a high protein is required or in the feed formulations for uh, aqua shrimp industry so um, that's the post harvest processing we do if you see in aquaculture, they use all these uh, fish pellets that yeah. are all processed uh, food for uh, feed for the fish. Compared to those, how does this uh, this kind of uh, feed uh, play out? Okay, in aqua, there is a bit of a challenge or a different species requirement is different. So that is how the formulation has uh, initially started uh, because uh, some species require more of a protein and different stage wise increase or decrease in protein is required because the protein is directly equated to the economics of uh, feed. Okay. The cost of the feed is directly impacted by the protein source that is being used. So that's where uh, feed formulation ha happens and that is why the pellets and all has uh, emerged. So uh, in that case again that is why we are also converting that into powder protein powder so that uh, it gives a flexibility for the formulators to use it has a protein source at the different uh, species and different stage ways. Uh, so that is one thing. And in also in aqua, <clears throat> there are like top uh, feeders, mid feeder, like bottom feeders, shrimps and all its bottom, bottom feeders and we have column feeders also. So based on species, uh, the the pellets, it, it has to be floating or sinking or semi-sinking. Mm -hmm. So it all varies. So that is where in aqua especially, we have all these uh, pelleting technologies. But for uh, chickens, I don't find uh, there is a, a big difference or a utilization or in, in application wise where we have to convert that into pellets. By varying the ingredient itself in a whole form, we can, I, I believe we can still manage to give a nutrition based on the stages, either it's a, a growth or a <coughs> layered board. So that variation can be done. But again, uh, practically for large forms, uh, I think it is uh, necessary for them to go for pellets or crumbles where it's already pre-formulated with uh, additional vitamins or whatever it's deficient. So it's fair enough to, uh, especially to handle uh, industrial volume, it's uh, fair enough for them to do uh, that way. But uh, when we look uh, at BSFL, it's like almost a, a naturally formulated, naturally packed, palleted version of the larvae which can be directly fed to chickens or even for fish so this is like after uh, uh, the flies hatch out uh, this is the exoskeleton that is left out after the flies hatch out so this is a good source of chitin the white thing here it's a very very uh, good source and a very pure source of chitin which can be extracted uh, from this exoskeleton uh, so what is a chitin uh, chitin is a chemical component uh, which find its uh, usage in pharma cosmetics. Uh, very in the purest form of chitin is a very sought out uh, uh, <coughs> component, bio component that is required in pharma and in cosmetic usages. The chitin can be further processed to chitosin, and uh, even glucosamine can also be extracted out of it. <coughs> so this is how they lay the eggs. Now after mating, they are laying the eggs in the clothes. So this is uh, this is the after uh, larvae stage. You'll yeah, be... after larvae stage, it becomes pre-pupae and pupae stage. Uh, from the pupae, the flies will emerge 
unlike other uh, larvae or worms, unlike worms and vermicompost uh, earthworms, this will take a fly stage. The, com the complete cycle of uh, this particular insect is not totally larvae. Uh, there is a fly stage also. So once uh, from uh, pupae, it will enter, the flies will emerge. It leaves only for seven days and they mate, they lay eggs. Okay. Uh, from eggs again, we saw the small larvae, right? From the eggs, we hatch that into larvae. And five days it will be there uh, in a proper incubated way. Then they go for the growth area. The, so these are the dead insects uh, that we kept in the cage. So these can be also act as a feed uh, for uh, uh, chicken. We can even mix this uh, dead insects in the feed uh, when when formulating chicken feed. So uh, compared to uh, market, uh, the feed that they give in the market is this uh, better or uh, what is the advantage of giving this kind of uh, uh, mainly the quality of protein uh, usually chicken uh, are given the, quite the amount of fish meal has been added now that has also been reduced at least in indian scenario the amount of fish meal that gets added in uh, chicken feed got drastically reduced in past years because of its own uh, issues but this is a very very animal protein source for chicken <coughs> compared to soya even it's a plant source so good bioavailability will be there the chickens will become the growth will be much more better and the resistance to disease will be much more better okay. so that is uh, one of the two main points and the fat it, it directly acts as an energy source so the whole larvae is like a pack of 30% uh, protein 30% fat and rest other nutrients so it's like a naturally formulated mm -hmm. pack uh, to be used directly to feed uh, chicken or fish uh, so slightly difference will be there based on the species in fish uh, aqua especially i'm telling but uh, it's like a naturally designed uh, pack or pellet of uh, feed for uh, chicken and fish what kind of sources uh, do you collect from uh, wet waste? Uh, we take uh, municipal waste, we take uh, bulk generating uh, food waste also, vegetable waste from Mondays to a certain extent. Uh, we also take uh, some of the poultry uh, natural death, death so that regular mortality that happen out of poultry from small farmers, small poultry owners, where that is a pain point for them to dispose of because they uh, it's, it's very small quantity where they can't have a proper furnace or proper setup to dispose it of. Uh, or they have to dig and bury and it gets uh, usins for the stray dogs, all those issues may happen. So this uh, BSFL becomes a better way uh, to process all those regular mortalities. It's not a disease, the mortalities, regular mortalities, I would say, that, that happens out of age also in layer forms. Out of age also there will be mortality that happens. So those uh, birds also we can process uh, with the BSFL. So the, that very small quantity, it's like I'm solving one yet another pain point from an industrial perspective for poultry. Uh, having said that, even BSF acts as a very, very good source of uh, biological control for the chicken manure, uh, where uh, the smell of uh, droppings in layer form is especially, that creates a hu huge nuisance for the in and around the villages. Uh, even some of the poultry units have been shut down because of this uh, uh, issue they, that can be minimized or uh, for, as a deodorizing agent or bulk reducer bsfl has been deployed so wherever bsfl is active none of the other insects can exist that is a specialty about bsfl so bsfl is deployed in that manure so that it processes the manure fastly and reduces the volume and drastically reduces the order of the manure so poultry industry is uh, um, using that uh, nature of BSFL also. So there are certain applications uh, in that front, in, in poultry industries based processing front where BSFL is being used. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the major challenges that consumers don't understand in, in waste management? Uh, Definitely, especially with waste, uh, uh, source segregation, if source segregation happens, uh, 90% of our problem gets solved. So ma main issue what we face, especially urban waste, it's a mixed waste, which is a painful task to segregate. Segregate the plastic and uh, with waste. Once this segregation happens, uh, plastic recycling is already in a sort of an established uh, uh, line of operations that is there. And with waste, we have technologies right now to process it. But where the difficulty happens is, is it's all mixed up. 
and segregating that is not humane at all especially in indian based uh, we don't even have a mission to do that not even to certain level so that is a big pain point uh, which uh, uh, even every one of the audience should understand it's a pain for any human to handle and we have to take responsibility to process it at what we have to do is just to throw it in two different bins that is there just right away it's just some degrees of uh, angle of uh, <laughs> hand change that we have to do segregate the wet and dry separately that's that's the only thing even segregating the dry to different uh, um, category has been done is taken care yeah. of but wet and dry if you can segregate and give it will solve a very very huge problem because once a uh, bit gets mixed definitely it can't be segregated and it, it directly goes for landfill you can make sure that it goes for landfill Lanfill. and once it reaches landfill and uh, more than carbon dioxide methane it's like 80 80x <coughs> more complicated much stronger greenhouse is being emitted so we have to be sure that source segregation is very very important it's not just keeping the house clean it's also mm -hmm. we have to get out and see what is happening in our streets too so just a small action of source segregating wet out of dry is, is a big big step that you can do for the nation so this was my first time visiting um, a bsfl unit and from my understanding i came to know um how uh, bsfl excel when it comes to processing wet waste given how um, exceptionally energy efficient they are also given their uh, you know voracious appetite they can consume rapid amounts of wet waste and very swiftly convert them into a nutrient rich biomass in a very short period of time which is necessary for governments that are having huge tonnage of wet waste reaching you know the municipalities on a daily basis and given that they require low water usage they are very versatile in the different streams of wet waste they can process and also given that they are so low maintenance um they are a, it becomes a very uh, sustainable bio agent that can be used uh, to process wet waste and i was pleasantly surprised that how um, even after processing wet waste bsfl can be used as a by product across different industries and i feel more uh, research should go into this so thank you so much anupa for uh, opening your doors and allowing me to learn so much about this super insect here